Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial on creating a contents page or a table of contents page in Word. Now I'm sure most of us already know what a table of contents page is. We've all read books and manuals and things like that. We know that at the beginning there is more often than not some kind of contents page which allows us to jump to the specific section that we're interested in. And the good thing to note here is that it works pretty much exactly the same in Word. You can add a table of contents at the beginning of any document, and you can use that table of contents to navigate around your documents. Now we're going to do a really simple example here, but I hope to show you some tips and tricks along the way relating to working with a table of contents. Now the way that a table of contents works in Word, and I would say that this is probably the most important point. You must ensure that your document that you want to add the table of contents to is styled correctly. And what I mean by that is that wherever you have any kind of heading or subheading, that you have the correct heading styles applied to those headings. Because essentially the way a table of contents works in Word is that Word will look through your document it will look for anything that you've marked as a heading and it will pull that up into the table of contents. So without heading styles in your document, then you're going to have literally zero in your table of contents. Now in this example, I'm starting from scratch. I've created a very basic five page document about the solar system and I've just got some test text in there. But what I have in this document is I have a main heading at the top here where it says the solar system. And then throughout this document, I have various different subheadings. So each of the planets has its own heading. You can see we have Mercury just there, Venus, and we scroll down and we have all of these subheadings. Now, when we get down to Earth, I also have some subheadings of that subheading. And what I essentially need to do is go through my document and use word styles in order to organize this document a little bit better. And I need to do this prior to inserting the table of contents. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through this document. It's not too long. And I'm going to start applying some heading styles. Now you'll find your heading styles available on the home ribbon in this styles group. And if I click this little drop down arrow, you'll see all of the styles that you have. So the ones I'm interested in are these ones here. So heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four, so on and so forth. Now, if you don't like the way that these styles look, then you absolutely can start creating your own heading styles. That's not a topic I'm going to cover in this particular video. We're just going to use these default styles up here. Now, another little tip for you when it comes to styling up a document to make your life a little bit easier is I like to turn on the styles pane. And to do that, all you need to do is to jump up to the view tab. And in this views group, you'll see I'm currently in the default, which is print layout view, but I'm going to switch to draft view. And what you'll now see is that the layout changes very slightly, but on the left hand side, I have this styles pane and currently it says normal in here for every single paragraph in this document. And that's because the text that I have in here is normal text. I haven't applied any formatting. I haven't applied any styles. Now, the reason I like to turn this on is because that, particularly if you're working with a long document, I quite like to be able to see what heading styles I have applied to which paragraphs in my document. And this just makes it a lot easier to see that. Now, another little tip here, if when you switch into draft view, you can't see this pane, it might be looking something like that. Then what you need to do is you need to go to file, down to options at the bottom and jump into the advanced area. And as we scroll down and it's under this display section, you can see here it says style area pane width in draft and outline views. So if yours says zero inches in there, then you're not going to see that styles pane. So all you need to do is come in here and you can change that to one, two inches, whatever you like. I'll just say two, click on OK. And there we go. If you find it's a bit too wide, you can then go in and you can just drag it in and out to suit how you want it to look. So a quick tip there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and style up this document. 
So my first heading, the solar system, this is kind of my main heading. So I'm going to want to apply a heading one to this piece of text. So you can highlight it or you can just click in front of it, go to the home ribbon and from the styles group, I'm going to say heading one. And now you can see in that styles pane, it's showing me I have a heading one style applied to this particular piece of text. I can scroll down. I'm going to go to Mercury. I'm going to click in front of it. Now this is really a subheading of the solar system. So I'm going to apply a heading two. The next one down is Venus. I'm going to click in front of there. This is also a subheading of the solar system. So that's going to be a heading two as well. And I can carry on going through my document, styling up all of the heading twos. Now I don't have to do them individually. If I scroll down a bit more, I could select Mars. I could hold down my control key, select Earth. Now I'm going to skip over these subheadings of Earth because we're going to star those up in a moment. I'm going to hold down control, click Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and finally hold down control and click Pluto. So I have all of them selected. I can now click heading two and it's going to apply to all of them. So you can save yourself a bit of time simply by utilizing the control key. So I have my heading twos. Now I'm going to go back to where we had Earth because I have a few subheadings of Earth in here as well. So I have all of the continents. So we have Africa. I'm going to highlight that. Hold down control, select Asia, North America, Europe. Australasia, Antarctica, and finally South America. Now these are subheadings of Earth. Earth is a heading two, so these are going to be a heading three. And there we go. So this is a very simple document, but we now have three levels of heading in there, heading one, heading two, and heading three. So super important, make sure your document is styled with word styles first. Once I've done that, I'm going to click on the view ribbon. I'm just going to jump back to print layout view. And I'm going to jump to the top of my document by pressing control home. So now I'm pretty much ready to insert my table of contents. Now, something else I'm going to show you very quickly just to throw it in is if you want to insert some kind of cover page on your document. Now, if we jump up to insert, you'll see that in this first group pages, we have some options for cover pages. So sometimes this makes your document look a lot more professional. So I'm going to add one in. I'm just going to select this one and I now have a very nice cover page. So essentially what I want is my cover page. I then want my table of contents and then I want the main body of my document. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to click my mouse in front of the solar system. And what you could do is just straight away enter in a table of contents. Now, what I like to do is I like to have my table of contents on a blank page. So what I tend to do is I put in a page break. Now, a quick way of doing that is to press control enter on your keyboard, and that will give you a, a page break that's going to push everything down onto the next page. So now I have this nice blank page in the middle there where I can enter in my table of contents. And as long as I've styled my document correctly, which we have, this is a very simple process. Let's jump up to the references tab. And this first group is table of contents. I can click the drop down. And what you'll see in here is that Word presents me with a few different options. So it has some inbuilt table of contents styles, essentially. Now you can create your own table of contents where you can choose the font and really kind of set it up how you want it to look. And you would do that through this custom table of contents option. But for the time being, I'm just going to select this automatic table one. And you can see there with one click, it's now added in my table of contents. I have my heading ones, my heading twos, and also my heading threes included in this table of contents. And I have the page number that those items are located on. Now I can use this table of contents to navigate. So if I want to jump to, let's say, North America, you can see as I hover over the page number, it says control plus click to follow the link. So if I hold down my control key and click, 
it's going to jump me to the page where I have North America. I could also, if I wanted to, if I didn't like it saying just contents, I could come in here and just add table of on the front and I could give it a bit more room by pressing enter. So really simple and straightforward just to add a table of contents into your document. If you want to make any minor modifications, if you click on your table of contents, right click your mouse and go into edit field and scroll down this list to where we have talk and click on table of contents. And this is where I can make some minor modifications to the way that my table of contents looks. So in this print preview area, you're seeing what I currently have. So currently I'm including heading one, heading two and heading three. So essentially all of the heading styles I have included in my document. Now, if I wanted to, if I thought maybe including three headings was a little bit overkill and I only wanted the top two level headings, I could go down to this show levels box. And instead of having three in there, I can take that down to two. And you can see that that print preview now updates. I can also choose if I want to show the page numbers or not. I don't know why you wouldn't in a table of contents. And you can also select to right align the page number. So I like mine flush with the right hand margin. So I like to have that option ticked. Now your tab leader is basically these dots which come between your heading and your page number. I have mine as dots, but if you wanted to, you could choose dashes or alternatively, you could have a solid line. But again, I quite like mine as dots. Now, if you wanted to go even further and customize your table of contents, you have a modify button down here. And this is where you can really get quite intricate as to how your table of contents looks. Now, the one thing you have to remember here is that I currently have TOC1 selected. So any changes I make to this are going to affect my heading level ones only. If I want to change the formatting or the font on the heading level twos, I would need to select TOC2. For the heading level threes, top three, so on and so forth. So if I was making a change to heading level one, I would click top one. I would go to modify and now I can come in here and I can make changes. So if I wanted to maybe change the color to, I don't know, a red color and maybe make it bold, I can do that in here. Click on OK. Click on OK again. And you can see what that's going to look like. So in my table of contents, all of the heading ones, and I only have one in my document, are going to be formatted in a red font and bold. Now you don't have to make those changes, but just be aware that if you want to, that modify button is where you would need to go. Now I've made some changes here, so let's click on OK. And straight away, Word's going to ask me if I want to replace this table of contents. So I'm going to say OK. And then the changes I've made should be reflected. So now you can see the solar system, my heading one is showing with that new formatting. And then we also got rid of all heading three. So now essentially underneath I have listed just the heading twos. So pretty straightforward. Let's have a look at another option now. I'm going to jump down to the end of this document. So let's control click on page five for Pluto. Now, what happens when you start adding more information into your document? It might be that you add more paragraphs onto the end of the document, or maybe you add something right in the middle of the document. And if I was to add new paragraphs into the middle of the document, that could essentially push some of these headings onto a different page, which means that my table of contents is then going to be incorrect. So for this demonstration, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a paragraph onto the bottom here. So let's say the Milky Way. I'm going to add some test text. I'm going to make sure that I select the Milky Way and apply a heading style. I'm going to do a heading two for this one. And what I now want to do is update my table of contents so that it includes that new heading. So all I do is go back to my table of contents, click on it, and you'll see just above there is an update table button. It's now asking me if I want to update my page numbers only or the entire table. Now, if you haven't added any new information in, maybe you've just moved some paragraphs around so that they're on different pages, you could do update page numbers only. However, if you have added new things in, and I always say just to be on the safe side, I always like to do update entire table, 
click on OK, and you can now see that my new table of contents entry has been updated on the bottom there. So that is it, a very quick run through of how you can add a table of contents in, edit it and make changes, and also update your table of contents. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next tutorial. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.